ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's December 1st, 2021. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com. Joined as always by our managing editor, Matt Shadell, as we discuss the news of the day. And uh, once again, Matt, I don't think anybody could care less about the news of the day. They want to know what's going on with football, what's going on with Manny Diaz, what's going on with the potential of Mario Cristobal coming. And if none of that happens, then what's next? And uh, both of our phones don't stop ringing. Uh, One minute people say one thing, the next minute people say the other. It's our jobs to figure out what's really true. And um, so far, I think we're doing a fairly decent job of doing that. Uh, I I think everything's pretty much status quo. Um, At midnight today, uh, Manny Diaz's buyout went out, went went, went down rather. So if the University of Miami wants to terminate Manny, it just got less expensive. So I'm expecting to find out in the next, I'd say, 48 hours or so, you know, maybe uh what the intentions are there uh there are reports that manny is not going to be fired there are reports that manny is going to be fired um i find it hard to believe that they've come this far in this whole thing uh with a plan to manny because if that were the case why wouldn't they have already said i mean manny's been on the road recruiting uh sunday nobody has made a declaration that manny's going to be back They even had a meeting with Manny yesterday morning and Manny wasn't told at that meeting that he's coming back either. So um, all signs of to a change, which would make sense. Uh, If you're firing Blake James, the athletic director, Matt, conventional wisdom would be that you didn't do all that to then keep Manny Diaz as football coach. Your thoughts? Uh, Okay. So there, there could be two prevailing theories. One is that they just don't know. I mean, it's either they don't know or he's getting fired. It's not he's staying for sure because they would have just told him by now (laughs) they're staying. There's no downside from their perspective he's staying to to not telling him that. So either he's getting fired or they're not sure. It's one or the other. Um, But, you know, it's funny, like a couple of days ago, you mentioned the phone's ringing off the hook. Like a couple of days ago, I literally talked to somebody in the athletic department who's asking me, what are you hearing? Because nobody here seems to know what the hell's going on. And that's inside UM at a fairly high level. And then, like, yesterday evening, I get a text, you know, um, from somebody who knows a bunch of people that are, you know, pretty high up in Miami saying, you know, that they they feel pretty good about Mario Cristobal. And not within a minute later, I get a text from a big booster who says, you know, I'm, I'm hearing Manny might be coming back. Yep. So, like, <laughs> literally, if you add those three, just those three items up together, it sort of shows you the, the dysfunction that has well, come from I think it shows that people are on Twitter and they're reading all the rumors and they're they're considering them all gospel. Yeah, but these aren't just fans. Are these, are, these, are, these aren't just fans, you know. This is a guy who, you know, I'm not going to – I don't want to give – Yeah, but I know where he heard that from, and he's reading it on Twitter. Like, Yeah, but he also has a lot of booster friends he's been talking to. I mean, this is a guy – they're reading it on Twitter. He's literally even – you know, I, I don't want to give away who it is, but he's been – no, no, He's clued in with a lot of people. But anyway, the, the point being <clears> – <throat> It, the, you know, you, you interrupted me. I lost my train of thought. Well, I'm the, dis, sorry. The, dis, the dysfun. Oh yeah, you're real sorry. The, dis, <laughs> the dysfunction in not having clarity in the process for people to see makes it appear as though the head and the feet aren't on the same body. It's it's almost like inexplicable when you see what happens at some of these other programs. Like, you know, just like grabbing Brian Kelly out of nowhere. Like, just stuff, decisions are just made and done. And it just seems like at Miami, even the athletic director job, how long has this been open for? It feels like 10 years. I mean, days. <laughs> like, I understand, they want to go, days. No right, I understand they want to go through a process, but, like, you're trying well, to hire I'm head. sure they got slowed down by Thanksgiving weekend. Of course. That's the end. Of course. But, yeah. you, my point is you see other programs where they just make split decisions. They know what they want and they do it. And at Miami, it doesn't appear that's what's happening. I think in the next 24 to 72 hours, if nothing happens for the AD and the head coaching position, I would argue that the dysfunction is palpable. 
you know, like it can be explained away maybe in the next 24 hours if they hire the AD and then maybe in the next 72 hours if they hire a coach and be like, okay, the timing wasn't awful. But to do neither by this weekend, to me, just reeks of total inadequacy at the, at the presidential level of the University of Miami as it pertains to the sports program. Yeah, and you know I don't agree with that. You know, I'm, I'm working this story from 6 a.m. till midnight every day, and I have been totally impressed with how the administration has been handling it. Everything I hear is positive in that vein. Um, they're doing their homework. They're asking a lot of questions. They're making sure they're informed on every aspect of the athletic department. Um, the AD search, I believe, is progressing at a normal rate. I mean, I think some people have been interviewed, some haven't. Um, but, I, you know, I think when you look at everything they have to do from uh, identifying candidates to background checks to setting up interviews to having meetings with Miami to getting everybody together for final interviews and things like that. It's just it's not a, a two second process if you're really taking a look at a wide variety of candidates, which I believe they are. Um, so uh, it's been going now. We, you know, we're looking at almost two weeks, but I think you got to subtract four days for Thanksgiving weekend when absolutely nothing would have gotten done. And um, I think it's progressing at, at its normal course. And I think you're looking at a, a two to three week process. And I think there's a chance maybe by the end of this week or beginning of next week that they will be announcing who the next athletic director will be. But in the meantime, you got the drama with the, with the head coach. And um, Mario Cristobal's game is Friday night. And what I am expecting to happen on Saturday morning is for the Miami official inquiry into Mario to begin. And I think that that's when they tell Oregon, we want to talk to Mario. They make that courtesy phone call and that that process begins. And I expect that to come to a head very, very quickly. I don't expect that to linger for, for too long. I, I, I think that um, certainly by Sunday that that will work itself through and Miami will have a very clear picture of where it's going moving forward. If, I mean, here, if, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm okay, waiting. Go ahead. I'm just it's, saying what I know. Time, how much time you got? Because you talked for about 20 minutes. I talked about no, one. No, I don't Go have ahead. 20 minutes. I Continue. Don't have 20 minutes. Continue, good sir. My Please phone's continue. already sitting here going crazy while we're doing the show, so I don't have 20 minutes. But but what I'm going to say is if that falls through, I think Lane Kiffin is sitting on deck hoping to get the job. And we'll see what happens. You know, Maybe the people that are saying Manny is going to be back are right. You know, um, That's certainly been a scenario that's been on the table for a while now. Uh, I guess what a week, almost a week and a half uh, since that first came up. I guess a week ago Monday that there were people that wanted Manny back, and and Manny had actually been told at that point that he would be back. Um, but I think that that's come much more in question as the process has moved forward. So Matt, you know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, your final thoughts on that subject? Well, I mean, I tried to interrupt you at the appropriate point to make a point about what you were saying, but now fans are probably not going to remember it. But no, they'll remember. You're, you're, you were talking at one point about, you know, waiting until Mario played the Friday game and then things move fast, which is great. But like, here's what I keep talking about with the dysfunction. Like when you just compare it to a program like Notre Dame and Oklahoma and, and whatever, like, you know, when Brian Kelly was poached, like Notre Dame's playing for the playoffs. Like that didn't stop Brian Kelly from saying, Hey, I'm, I'm making yeah, a They game. lost Brian Kelly. Right. Bad, bad example. Notre Dame failed in this thing. Correct, but the team that grabbed him. No, what I'm saying is Brian Kelly didn't say, hey, I'm not doing anything until after the playoffs or I'm not doing anything until whatever. Like, you're saying Mario is waiting. Let's wait. He doesn't want to do anything Kelly now. doesn't have a game this week. Correct, but he does have a playoff that he wants to play in. Yeah, but he doesn't have a game this week. Okay, well, okay. Mario has a game Friday. Okay, but my point is. He's playing for his third straight conference title to I get understand. Oregon to the Rose Bowl. That, that should be his priority. Okay. I mean, but my point is other coaches make decisions quickly, um, not withstanding what their team is currently doing. Like, okay. it's not – if Mario's and, future and is in Miami – that might be the case here. If, if, I, I think there's a – you know, there's a difference between, you know, back-channel conversations and there's a difference between official conversations. And um, Mario has an agent. You know, his agent's perfectly capable of, of, of negotiating – and he doesn't have to be in the middle of it. You know, he's only, he could sit there and coach his team. Um, I expect Miami on Saturday to ask, not ask, but inform Oregon that they plan to talk to Mario. I, you know, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. That's what I'm expecting to happen Saturday. Now, 
before Matt, that we talk about the news of the day, I do have a little bit of a bone to pick. I can't remember who the poster is on canesport.com who was uh, complaining. It, it might've even been on YouTube, but complaining that I don't wear collared shirts enough. Okay. So today I am wearing a collared shirt. Everybody look, you know, the canesport.com official. I know it's Under Armour, not Adidas. Oh, wait, wrong side. I know it's, I know, wait a minute. There it is. I know it's, I know it's Under Armour, not Adidas, but it is a collared shirt. Matt, on the other hand, I would like to point out is not wearing a collared shirt. So if you're going to pick on somebody's clothing in the comments section on YouTube, um, make sure that today you're picking on Matt's clothing because he is not wearing a collar shirt. And I would say there's a better chance than not that underneath that microphone there that you're seeing, there's probably an alligator logo. Like there usually is. First of all, it's not. I'm an I'm an everyman. Oh, that was showing off. He went to the French I'm, Open. Okay. All right. I'm a, I'm an everyman. First of all, I didn't go to the French Open. I just got the, ch- the shirt on sale. Uh I'm an everyman. You can be your little fancy guy, you know, with your cigars and your steaks. Okay. I'm just going to stick to the stone crabs and fish that I actually catch from the sea and eat my own stuff. So whatever, man. A man of the earth. That's Absolutely. what I am. A man of the yeah. earth. Absolutely. All right. So now that that's out of the way, cause I, you know, that kind of ruffled my feathers a little bit. Cause I wear college shirts a lot. I don't always wear college shirts in the morning. Why are we talking about college? I still don't understand why you got so Because I was getting me. criticized for not wearing collared shirts by, 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 did you look at the poster who criticized you were they wearing a collared shirt i i didn't i you know obviously i didn't see what they were wearing when they were typing in their well no, they have their little their little side. icon but i mean like i'm literally getting criticized for not wearing collared shirts so today i made sure in honor of that poster that i wore a collared shirt all right the news of the you can't day. even see it's collared with the way this video is it just looks like a t-shirt with a weird angle it's like no, a no, this is clearly this is clearly a cop See, this is clear. Well, when you pick it up, you can tell it's a collar shirt. But right now, it just looks like a V-neck. I can, but maybe, I, well, here. I'm I mean, if somebody me. criticizes your face, you're going to wear a mask, a face mask hey. next time? Like, how yeah. how far are you willing to go on people criticizing you? I'll do whatever. Whatever works, man. If they tell you, I could mean, I, I, I I put my flamingos and my palm trees on, too. Like, I I will do whatever works. Whatever what if makes they say it. you look, what if they say what you if, should shave your head, you look better bald? You shave no, your head that I won't do. But just about anything else, whatever makes the people happy when they wake up in the morning. All right. Well, I'm going to make some suggestions. Show, Earrings, um, nose ring, lip ring, for sure. That would detract. Those would probably look all right. With, those would look okay with this, with, with, with these glasses. Now, the reason you got to do it is because then people won't look at those glasses. They'll just see the rings. That's the most I important. I love these glasses. Man, these glasses are awesome. All right. So let's talk about the news of the day. All right. Recruiting. <laughs> yeah, we're writing about recruiting because that's what's going on. And, and, you know, we understand it's all in a state of flux. It has, you know, they can't, like, trying to recruit in this environment where nobody knows what's going on with the coach is not really very productive for Miami. Let's be honest. I don't expect this to continue like this for too many more days, okay? Uh, I, I think by this weekend, this all will work itself through. There's not going to be a lot of official visits this weekend. Um, and I think we will have a clear picture by the end of the weekend of exactly what is going to be going on with the football program at Miami. Um, that's number we, one. We need to. That's for sure. Before yeah, no like, before Saturday, in my opinion, because they do have some scheduled official visitors. They better let this coaching staff know what's up by Saturday. Yeah, well, they, and they might. It might play out in that timeline. Um, but anyway, but today we have a story basically updating everything that's going on in recruiting so you can catch up from a blanket standpoint on everything going on in recruiting. Um We have a story with an offensive lineman that's been steadily picking up recruitment uh, by the name of Matthew McCoy. So uh, take a look at that. Miami is certainly looking for offensive linemen. Um, Not really playing for, you know, in in the high seas, okay? Like, you know, this isn't like fishing for top shelf linemen around the country. they're down to plan B. That's the, you know, that's honest, right? Am I, am I right, Matt? Plan- yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're, yeah they're, they're for, down- for, for alignment for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They're in plan B. <laughs> okay. That's not good, but they are. Um, so um, I hope Matthew McCoy isn't watching this and he says, oh, that, <laughs> that, you know, that, son of a baby, that, that SOB's calling me plan B. Um, but I mean, Miami's in plan B and, uh, but we've got a story about Matthew McCoy who's been getting recruited and 
um, has an official visit set to Miami, so you can catch up on that. And, um, also, if you missed Kane Sport Live last night, you can uh, catch up on the podcast. Uh, that's on the website this morning. It's also on our YouTube channel. And um, a programming note for tonight, the Lamar Thomas Show. And uh, the Lamar Thomas Show has the potential to be really cool tonight. I'm not going to spill all the beans uh, because I want you to watch it. Uh, it's going to be fun like usual. I don't know if you saw last week's show with Dan Cilio. Uh, that was really epic. Uh, tonight uh, promises to be a lot of fun as well. So the Lamar Thomas Show at 8 o'clock tonight. So that's really going to do it for today. We'll keep monitoring the situation and bring you up-to-date reports all day long tomorrow on the message boards. For Matt Shodell, who is not wearing a college shirt, I'm Gary Furman, dressed mighty fresh, if you might ask. We thank you for joining us on Kane Sport Live, and you guys have a great day, and uh, make sure you dress cool yourselves. See you tomorrow, everybody.